This video is sponsored by Squarespace. All right, I've been getting a few comments about this, so let's do it. And I haven't read that much recently, so some of these books are read like a year or a year and a half ago. And some I've recommended before, but figured I'd re-emphasize them if it was something I really enjoyed. Okay. First up, When Einstein Walked with Goodell, Excursions to the Edge of Thought. I really like this book. A better title for it might be just the Excursions to the Edge of Thought part. So Einstein is a name that everyone knows, and then Goodell is a name that the average person probably doesn't know, but he's a big name in mathematics that I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with. And they both attended Princeton together and were known to take long walks to and from their classes. But the topics of their conversation aren't well known, apparently. And that's why I thought this book would be, the things they talked about. But I guess you could say this is some of the things they might have talked about. Because it's just a high-level overview of a bunch of big topics within math and physics. It goes through higher dimensions, chaos theory, infinity, logic in the computer. It talks about Alan Turing, uh, quantum mechanics, and more like that. So if you're into those kind of big topics, then this is one I would recommend. And then this book, for example, is similar. It just talks about a lot of big ideas, uh, some of the people behind them. It talks about infinity, it talks about logic, paradoxes, what computers can and can't do, and more stuff like that. And another one on that topic is the prime number conspiracy, which is not just about prime numbers, and no, they're not a conspiracy. But this one goes through big topics, mostly in math, not physics for this one. And it talks about not just how some of these things were solved, but the process leading up to that. So it has sphere packing, it has also concepts of infinity, randomness, and more like that. And this is by Quanta, which has another book that is titled something about Alice and Bob. Alice and Bob Meet the Wall of Fire. So yeah, that's by these same people. And I read a lot of good things about that. A lot of people actually said they like that one a little more than this book. I just haven't read it yet, so can't give a recommendation. But this is a good one. The next is Symmetry, and this book gives a great overview of what abstract algebra and group theory are about. It talks about symmetry within nature, games, and within mathematics, how like with the solutions to a polynomial equation, just a basic one even, x squared equals 1, have solutions that lie in a symmetric way on the complex plane. So this talks about that, it goes through Galois, it talks about uh, the impossibility of solving a quintic equation where there's no quote, quadratic formula or a formula to solve a fifth degree polynomial or anything higher. But there is one that exists for fourth degree, third, and second degree polynomials. I would recommend this book to well, anyone who has an interest, but especially to someone who hasn't yet taken abstract algebra, but is going to. Because this kind of gives you, again, a big picture view of what you're going to learn without going into the rigorous math. I've noticed a lot of teachers, they just dive into the, the technical stuff, but you don't, you don't have this big picture view of how it's going to connect eventually or why you're even learning it. So I think this is kind of a book that would give you a good idea of, of the why. Or this is a book I would recommend to someone who's about to go into computer science. This is a personal favorite of mine. I recommended it and read it a long time ago. But it talks about a lot of concepts, mathematical concepts, you learn about within computer science. It starts with optimal stopping, goes into scheduling, networking, sorting, has some game theory in it. But again, just like pretty much all the books I'm talking about, it's accessible to anyone. There's no prereqs needed to, to go through this book. And here's one I really like, The Numbers Behind Numbers. This is one I've recommended before. Numbers is a TV show I've talked about many times on this channel, but this is great for anyone who just likes applied math. It talks about a lot of the mathematics within that show numbers, but it relates it all to real world examples because the TV show isn't all based on things that have actually happened. But this tries to do just that. It talks about, you know, the mathematics behind the fingerprints and actual algorithms that have been used for that. It talks about some of the mathematics involved or that was used to find people involved in 9-11 after the fact. So again, if you like applied math, definitely would recommend. And the next topic of books is all the trippy stuff. Higher dimensions, wormholes, time travel. Uh, this one is more math oriented, but I really liked it. It's not, I don't want to say cartoony, but I mean, it has pictures on pretty much every page that go through what the author's talking about. And it's not super rigorous, 
but it's it's kind it's technical in that you might have to reread some things twice to understand them um, and you have to really be focused as you go through this but it starts with flatland as you can expect and it goes through a bunch of ways to think about the fourth dimension by as always taking it down one dimension but it goes through some things i had never heard of before it talks about like how a flatland creature would perceive a three-dimensional wormhole and then it takes it up to how we perceive one versus what's actually going on so this is one i would definitely recommend and then on the physics side, hyperspace is the perfect complement. This is more focused on super strings, quantum mechanics, black holes, the fourth and fifth dimension, and more like that. It does talk about some math, like the metric tensor is discussed in here. So it's a lot of big ideas, but again, accessible to anyone, and it's more physics oriented. Okay, now if you've seen the topology videos on this channel, or any other math channel, and like that kind of stuff, just a big overview of what topology is, there are two books I'd recommend. This is one of them, Euler's Gem. This one talks about mostly what Euler did, which is basically everything, but it talks about Euler's characteristic, it has the relationships between geometric and topological properties, it goes into higher dimensions, it goes into the platonic solids, all that kind of stuff. So this is a great overview, not theory. This is a great overview of topology and graph theory, but it's not the technical topology you would see in a textbook. It's all the stuff anyone could understand. Although it does get decently involved later on. And then the next book I want to mention, which I only have an online version of, is The Shape of Space. But this book does such a good job at talking about concepts within topology, relating them to physics, but in a way that anyone can understand. Now, it's technically a textbook, I guess you would say, just because it has like exercises throughout the book, but it, it doesn't read like one. You can just start reading the book at like a normal book and you'll be fine. A textbook, you really couldn't do that without doing many practice problems. But this you can just read straight through. Maybe you need to try some things, try some of the exercises, but for the most part, you don't. This book is just extremely good at connecting physics with topology. Unlike this one, which doesn't really talk about physics, it's mostly math oriented. So if you like both of those fields, then Shape of Space is definitely one I would recommend. Okay, now for this next category, I want to start with, so people are dumb, right? Not really a question. They are. I'm dumb. And because people are dumb, we should do something about that. And I think one way to help is we should have a split in the math curriculum. If I could redo the math curriculum, this is what I would do for like high school, 14 to 18 year olds. I would implement a split pretty early on. One route is what we have now for the most part. STEM students would go this way, algebra one, algebra two, geometry, calculus, and so on to get into a technical field. Uh, you need that information. The other route for the kids who just don't need to be graphing third degree polynomials should involve several courses that honestly everyone should take. But those courses would involve this kind of stuff, the how to lie with statistics stuff. This is a great book. It's written like in the 50s, but still very relevant. And it teaches you and gives several examples of how to look at numbers, data, headlines, articles, whatever it may be, and interpret the numbers for what they're actually saying. Because there are many instances where we see these numbers and most people would interpret them some way or it seems really easy to interpret them one way when actually they mean something else. And I have many examples in other videos. I'm very passionate about this and I'll link those below. But in general, I think this is extremely important and this should be emphasized. Not calculating standard deviation, not a stats course. I mean, just focused on things like Simpson's paradox, Bergson's paradox, survivorship bias, and all the fallacies I've talked about, that kind of stuff. Uh, and again, this is an older book, still very relevant, but two newer ones that are similar are The Drunkard's Walk and How Not to Be Wrong, The Power of Mathematical Thinking. They're not the same, they're not just based on statistics, but they are about mathematical thinking and how to uh, interpret numbers, again, for what they're really saying, how to look beneath the surface. And a, and a lot of these examples, if you've never seen this stuff before, you'll read it and say, oh, I would have never thought of that. And we need more of that. Every book I've recommended so far is for people who are interested in that stuff. These books and this one, I recommend just for everyone who, you know, has a pulse and is human. This is, I think this is really important stuff and is kind of the kind of stuff that should be taught in school. So definitely get those. Okay, now the next category of books I would call future tech. The books that talk about what our lives, technology, transportation, cities, and all that will look like in the coming years and decades. 
uh, Physics of the Future and Soonish are two books I've discussed uh, a while back and still very relevant. I really like these a lot. Um, I like these types of books for two reasons. One, just out of pure interest, I find technology really interesting. And uh, these talk about nuclear fusion, bioprinting, cheap access to space travel, uh, room temperature superconductors and the impact that will have on our world, things like that. But a second reason I really like these types of books is investing. I started investing when I was, when I just graduated college and uh, I got, I did a lot more of it, especially during this pandemic. And I realized I don't like investing in individual stocks that much. I will, I will, but I like investing in, in sectors, in ETFs, in industries I think will do really well. Like renewable energy is one I, I really like investing in. So that's why I like these books. And I think this is another example of one that kind of shows what industries are going to be big in the next five to 10 years. This one's, it's, this one's more short term, like nuclear fusion discussed in these, we're not close to having that, nuclear fusion reactors. But uh, this talks about autonomous vehicles, virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, and the impacts those will have on manufacturing, medicine, how we watch sports, and more of that. And this is very new. This, I mean, this talks about COVID and the impacts of that. So this is very new, very uh, relevant. Uh, 5G is discussed in here and the impact that will have on us. So a lot of good things in here and it talks about the companies that are also working on this stuff. Like it goes through a list of companies, um, some of which I had never heard of before. So I did some research on that, which I usually enjoy doing, just kind of see what things are being worked on. So Infinite Retina, definitely one I would recommend and it's probably one of the, if not the newest future tech book out there. And since I'm on the topic, I might as well plug, if you want to get a free stock, you can by signing up at the Weeble app, just use the link below and you get a free stock. You can sell it immediately if you want. So pretty cool. And then this last category of books, I figured I'd just mention it because I get a lot of questions on it. Actually, uh, people ask me what business books I recommend. Honestly, I've, I've read like, you know, the four hour work week. I really like that one. Um, my personal favorite is hands down. I think it will always be the millionaire fast lane book. I would recommend this to like an 18 year old to maybe a 22 year old, someone in college, especially who might want to start a business at some point or definitely wants to, this is not like for the CEO of a fortune 500 company. This is for the person thinking about it. It is extremely motivating. Um, and I can, I can pretty confidently say this channel might not exist without this book because after I read this book, I immediately started a business which failed and then I immediately wanted to start another one which evolved into this YouTube channel. So this had a big impact on me. Then another book I've been recommending to people for businesses is Launch. This one, it, it does two things I think. One, it shows you how to launch a product, but even if you don't have one, that's okay. But if you have something you want to sell, whether it's you know, an online course or something, just how to launch that, how to get it in front of people, how to generate sales. But it also goes through a lot of examples of people who have launched certain things that aren't anything crazy. It wasn't these people who spent three, four years developing a product in a lab. It's just these people who kind of were maybe kind of good at something, kind of passionate, not even the best. They just kind of had enough interest in something and they sold it in this unique way. And throughout the book, you'll probably say they made how much doing what now, but it'll make you realize, huh, I can make money doing a lot. You, you don't, you don't feel as limited with this book. So it kind of expands your, expands your uh, mind about what's possible in terms of business. So I really like that one too. But and when it comes to reading business books, I mean, if you read too much, you end up not doing anything. So I recommend maybe reading a few, getting motivated, and then go do something. And one platform you can use to start or help your business is Squarespace, the sponsor of this video. Man, that was smooth. Squarespace is an online platform that allows you to create a unique website for your business or personal needs. Whether it's a blog, an online store, a website to showcase the projects you worked on, whatever you may need, Squarespace is the perfect place to get started. You'll find useful features from website analytics and data trends to blogging tools that allow visitors to share content to different social media platforms to email campaigns so you can constantly engage and inform your audience. To get started with a free trial, go to squarespace.com slash Zachstar or click the link below. And when you're ready to launch, you'll save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Again, all relevant links are below. And with that, I'm going to end that video there. 
Thanks as always to my supporters on Patreon. Social media links to follow me are down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.